So we previously took a look at running um, GCC and compiling code from the command line. And this particular operating system that we were looking at is the Linux slash Unix environment. Now it's going to look a little bit different if you are operating from a Windows environment. And so to open up a Windows command line, you would use CMD typically, and then it opens up just a, you know, a blank terminal. And so within that terminal, let's clear this. If I want to clear the screen, I would use a CLS. If I want to see what's in my directory, I would do a DIR. And I could see what's there. Now, what I'd like to do is try to compile code from this command line. So hopefully if I type GCC, right? Hopefully the computer is smart enough to find that executable. Um, so typing GCC, you could actually end up with a failure where it doesn't report a successful find. Meaning that um, if it hasn't been, let's assume that the name of the executable is GCCC. It would say, oh, it's not recognized as a command. Um, and so even though you may have installed it, it may not necessarily uh, recognize GCC as a command simply because when it went to go look for it, it may not have found it. So in order to uh, make sure that it's found, you may have to make some changes um, to your environment. So we're sitting here within a terminal window. And if I just simply type the word set, these are all of these variables that are um, on the left are shown here and their values are shown. These are variables, environment variables that your operating system uses uh, and particular programs might use. For example, the one at the top says the operating system we have is Windows NT, number of processors I have is eight. Um, and it says maybe my prompt, it says information about what the, like my current command line prompt is. The important one here for us is this word path. This path is a series of directories, semicolon, another directory, semicolon, another directory, right? When your program is, let's clear this, the LS here, when your program is looking for an executable, it's going to go through all of those directories, hoping to find the executable. If it doesn't, you're going to get this command. So you may have to set the path. Um, and that string, if I want to expand it to see what my current path is, I could do something like echo and then an uppercase P-A-T-H surrounded by these percent signs, and it will echo what my current path is. So that's my current path. And I can look to see if where I stall, installed my compiler is actually there. So C colon and MinGW binaries. So that's where my compiler is. Um, and yours may likely be in a similar place, um, but there's more than one way to set that path. We could set it kind of manually here in the command line, or we could set it through the Windows environment. Um, and I think there's a later discussion about that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start Notepad so that I can have a, uh, let's call it foo2.c. And this is opened up. And then I'll go ahead, put some code in there and save it and close it. And let's go back. I'm, on my own computer versus in the Linux environment. And let's see, uh, let's say DIR, give me a directory of everything that starts with uh, the letters FO. And it tells me I have a foo and a foo2.c. And you can see that um, the most recent one, since it's now currently 145, it looks like 144 was the one that, I'm, that I just started. So let's compile it. If I do something like this, GCC, foo2.c, I get an executable that's created. If I organize this directory based on date and time it was created, you'll see at the very bottom, um, foo.c, and then another file, a.exe. So by default, 
the executables are named a.exe. It's a.out in, in Linux slash Unix. So my executable is my A file. So I can just simply call that, um, ex run that executable with A, and it will run. A or a.exe certainly will get it to, to run. So that's my executable. But if just like in Linux, if I want to have the output file named something that won't get overwritten because every executable would, you know, would be named a.out if I didn't, right? Every C file would be compiled and we would just keep overwriting our a.exe. So I'm going to name this output foo2. Now, when I do my directory of the most recent files created, there's this second executable, foo2, and I can use that to run my executable. So you're going to have to make sure that the file, the executable, um, you know, the GCC, as it, which is an executable itself, that it's in the library, or I'm sorry, in the path, so that uh, you can actually run it. And so the subsequent video setting path from the command line, um, it shows you a couple of ways, just gives you some information on how you can set the path so that uh, your program can, can run, right? So code blocks will need to be able to find an executable. So you may have to do some things with the path to make sure uh, that, that code blocks is able to compile and run correctly. So be sure to look at the, the next video. That should help you.